The Chattanooga National Cemetery is the final resting place for nearly 44,000 veterans. And in fact, it's the only national cemetery that is home to prisoners of war from both World War I and World War II. So today we're going to explore the grounds here. We're going to visit some very notable figures that you probably heard of. And we're also going to visit a few figures that you probably haven't heard of. So let's see what awaits us in the Chattanooga National Cemetery. So we have just entered the Chattanooga National Cemetery and right in the beginning at the main entrance is this. Now if you don't know what this is, this is the monument to the Andrews Raiders and it was dedicated by the state of Ohio in 1890. And it honors Union spy James J. Andrews of Ohio and 24 of his men who snuck deep into Confederate territory on a mission to disrupt Confederate rail lines and communications via telegraph. Now to get a little more in depth into the raid itself on April 12th, of 1862 the men boarded the general which was a wood-burning locomotive near marietta georgia now while the passengers and conductor hopped off the train to enjoy a nice breakfast the uh, raiders took off in the locomotive headed north on their way they would cut telegraph lines tear up rail lines and do anything they can to disrupt confederate communications and supply routes now shortly after the Andrews Raiders hijacked the locomotive, the conductor and his men realized that the train was no longer there. So they began a pursuit through Georgia. Now, when Andrews Raiders reached Ringgold, Georgia, nearly 80 miles northwest from where they began, they jumped off the train and scattered into the woods surrounding that general area. Now, Andrews and most of his men would be captured and Andrews would be hanged in Atlanta. On top of the monument here, you can see the statue of the train and that is the general the locomotive that the Andrews Raiders hijacked that is a nice touch there and a good visual now if you're wondering why there's wreaths on the gravestones here it is December and in December they have a event called wreaths across America where organizations all throughout the country lay wreaths on the headstones here so if you're watching this at another time other than December, just know that's the reason here. But right here, move the wreath here. This is the gravesite of James Andrews. And next to Mr. Andrews is Samuel Slavens, Medal of Honor recipient. Company E, 33rd Ohio Infantry. And you can see he has the gold outline here on his name. Here, Samuel Robertson, Medal of Honor recipient, Company G, 33rd Ohio Infantry. George D. Wilson, Company B, Ohio Infantry. Marion A. Ross, Medal of Honor recipient, Sergeant Major, 2nd Ohio Infantry. William Campbell, 2nd Ohio Infantry. Try to get my shadow out of the way here. P.G. Shandrick, Company K, 2nd Regiment, Ohio Infantry. And last but not least is John M. Scott, Medal of Honor recipient, Sergeant Company F, 21st Ohio Infantry. So here are a handful of the men that participated in Andrew's raid here. And I believe these were some of the first Medal of Honor recipients. Okay, so we are approaching our first figure that not many people probably know about. Well, this is Private William Zion, and he received the Medal of Honor while serving in the United States Marine Corps for actions during the Boxer Rebellion in Peking, China, from July 21st to August 17th, 1900. Now, Private Zion here also served in the U.S. Army attaining the rank of first lieutenant. That is pretty interesting. So here is another Medal of Honor recipient from the Boxer Rebellion, which I think this is the first 
gravesite that I visited that has a member from the Boxer Rebellion. I thought that was super interesting. So here is Private William F. Zion here in Section U, Site 40. You know, it's always extremely humbling coming out to cemeteries like this and spending a little time learning about some of the stories here. I feel like it's the least I can do. They didn't know me, I don't know them, but yet they still sacrifice themselves for a greater cause. And for that, I am forever grateful. So I really enjoy coming out and sharing some of these stories with you and hopefully keeping their memory alive. Like I said, I don't know them. Most of their stories, I don't know. But what I do know is I can remember their sacrifice here today. So we are approaching our next unsung hero here today and resting before us is Master Sergeant Ray E. Duke, and he received the Medal of Honor during his service in the United States Army in Company C, 21st Infantry Regiment of the 24th Infantry Division, for conspicuous gallantry and outstanding courage in Korea on April 26, 1951. And the men that were serving with him state that he was last seen firing a machine gun into the ranks of onrushing assailants. Duke is buried in Section Z, Site 373, and you can see the Medal of Honor on his headstone here. Thank you for your service, Master Sergeant Ray E. Duke. Continuing on here, and we come to a section that is full of Civil War unknown soldiers. And like any national cemetery, you're always going to have a large presence of unknown dead, mostly from the American Civil War. And I believe I read there's nearly 5,000 unknown soldiers buried at the Chattanooga National Cemetery. And probably one of the many great fears of soldiers serving during that time is dying and being forgotten and lost to history. But again, we're here today, and although we don't know their names, we can remember their sacrifice. So I, I'm just stopping for a sec, just trying to take some of this in. And... You know, sometimes when you're filming, you get caught up and you have to go to certain sites and film and then you're on to the next one. But I just want to stop and just try and take some of this in and realize where I am. You know, the older I get, the more I realize just how fragile life is. And here I look out and I see nothing but headstone after headstone after headstone. And it's just a good reminder of just how fragile life is and how in an instant, it can be gone. And, you know, coming to places like that is a really good reminder for me. And, uh, man, I don't know how to express how grateful I am for people like this. So this next grave that we're approaching is rather unique. And this is another first for me. This is S. Miller, and he served during the American Revolution. Now, I've read that the first initial S stands for Samuel, but I'm not entirely sure. But here's his stone, S. Miller of the American Revolution. We don't know much about him. As you can see, we don't know if he was infantry, cavalry, artillery, but the possibilities are endless with this one. Think, was he with Washington crossing the Delaware? Was he at Lexington and Concord? Was he at the Battle of the Cowpens, Yorktown? Did he cross paths with Washington or Lafayette? The uh, Questions are endless, but regardless, this man here served during the American Revolution, and that is absolutely amazing that I'm able to come here and visit this site. Now, when you come to cemeteries like this, you're going to see the final resting place of veterans from all sorts of conflicts. We saw one from the American Revolution, Civil War, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. But one conflict that you don't really associate places like this is the war on terror and it's weird to say because it's still going on in some places but remember this conflict has been raging since early 2000s and people that are in my age group are the ones fighting this conflict now so I want to visit a few of the sites of some of the members that lost their lives during the war on terror now this is PFC Jonathan Hall and he sustained mortal wounds when his vehicle was struck by an improvised explosive device operating near outpost Karkot Castle, Afghanistan. He was assigned to the 3rd Battalion, 187th Infantry, 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 101st Airborne. And as you can see, 
He succumbed to his injuries on April 8th, 2010. So we are approaching the final resting place of Sergeant Brandon Curtis Reese. And he was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 2nd Marine Regiment of the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade out of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Now Reese's unit was heavily engaged in Iraq and his unit went back out to go pick up some wounded comrades on the outskirts of An Nasiriya when a grenade would enter his vehicle and explode. They were carrying ammunition which caused a tremendous explosion and Sergeant Brandon Reese was killed in action in Iraq on March 23rd, 2003. It's, uh, this one, you know, I don't know Sergeant Reese, but it does hit home seeing that date because at that time I was just entering high school. So to put it in perspective, you know, I was in high school without a care in the world and Sergeant Reese was engaged in Iraq and uh, lost his life. And one thing to remember is there are 44,000 people buried in this cemetery. Each one of those people had a story and each of those stories here came to an end at some point, leaving behind their family in a huge void. And that is one of the things that I need to constantly remember. Approaching. Another member who was killed during the War on Terror. This is PFC Travis F. Hayslip, and he was killed in action in Iraq when an improvised explosive device detonated near his vehicle. PFC Hayslip was just 20 years old when he would be killed in action, and five other members of the 1st Cavalry Division were killed along with PFC Hayslip. Now, you heard me mention earlier in the video that this was the only national cemetery to house prisoners of war. Well, that section is right here. And in 1935, the German government erected the German prisoner of war monument between section R and the post section to honor 92 German POWs captured during World War I who died on American soil. Now, the cemetery also contains an additional 108 World War II prisoners of war from Germany, Italy, and Poland. And I believe there also is a Canadian soldier buried here at the National Cemetery. I'm not sure if it's this section, but it's worth noting. And this is one of those moments of humanity, I guess you can say. You have adversaries on the battlefield. Once the battle was over, it was decided that what was best for the fallen POWs, that they should remain where they perished. And their remains are in this section, resting peacefully. It's just that sliver of humanity that you hope we never lose as humans. So now we are approaching the final resting spot of Brigadier General William P. Sanders. Now on November 18th of 1863, Sanders was riding his horse and he'd be shot in the side, being mortally wounded. And the sharpshooters were under the command of Confederate Colonel Edward Porter Alexander, which just happened to be Sanders' roommate and classmate at West Point. Now, Sanders is the only Southern-born Union officer to be killed during the American Civil War, and in fact was the cousin of Jefferson Davis. That is pretty interesting. And if you're looking to visit Brigadier General Sanders, he is in Section C, Grave 1601. So now we are approaching one of the more well-known figures that is buried here at Chattanooga National Cemetery. And this is the final resting spot of Desmond Doss, Medal of Honor recipient. Now, Desmond Doss, based on his religious beliefs, refused to carry a weapon or kill an enemy soldier while he served as a medic in the Pacific Theater. He served in Guam, the Philippines, Japan, and he was eventually awarded two Bronze Stars, the Medal of Honor, and it is said that he saved nearly 75 members of his unit while in combat. Now, some estimates have it as high as 100, but Desmond Doss, being the humble person that he is, states he saved around 75, and he would be awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions. It is just remarkable to me that you can enlist into a conflict, uphold your beliefs and fight without a weapon, knowing that you're going up against a tough and determined enemy. And he would survive the war, and now he is resting here eternally at the Chattanooga National Cemetery.